guys, Unfiltered Gamer here with another Gen Con 2018 interview. We have Ryan and Ben here uh, with the game Bellum from Van Hamlet Games. And we're going to be talking about this specific game. I already did a review on it, but since we're here, let's go ahead and go over it anyway. Hey, Bellum is the, as already established, two-player tactical card game played on this checkerboard here. You are fielding units to your keep space, moving them across the battlefield, and attacking your opponent's keep space using the innovative stockpile resource system. Super innovative. The most innovative. And so I've actually had a chance to play this, and there's two different factions, right, to the game, with probably some more in the works, I imagine, oh, or something yeah. like that. And uh, you can basically kind of create your own deck if you'd like, and you're basically playing units down, moving across the board, and fighting. It, it reminds me of a game I really like called Heroes of Karth. Uh, it's one of those games that I actually have a little promo card in, which is super cool. And I was playing originally with it, and I'm like, this feels like Karth, but it's like this really quick, in-depth experience all in one. And it's the black and white. It has its own unique distinguishing features, which is really cool. You want to say something? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so, I, 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 I'll, I'll do it all myself. Uh, you did great. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so like you said, you got the two faction, the Gabalos and the Sapiens. Um, the Gabalos are more of are a... Are those kind of like goblins? They're kind of like goblins. Yeah. I didn't want to say goblins. Gabalos. Gabalos. It's fun to say, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got the Gabalos, they're swarmy, they're more of the, uh, the the aggressive type, and then you've got the sapiens or the humans, they've got guns, they can stand back and shoot. So you've got the swarm versus the uh, more of a defensive. And you have two different types, right, obviously. Uh, one of us is going to be more of using the different swarming monsters, basically, that you're spawning over and over again, these guys, and you can utilize them to kind of help improve your, your gameplay. Maybe you'll be sacrificing them to increase the power of one of your monsters, or you'll be uh, sacrificing them to explode them, while the humans have that really powerful range abilities, and they have a lot of action cards, too, which both decks do, to utilize in order to either wipe a monster completely off the board, or simply to power humans actually get the plus one plus one counters, which is really the, what's unique with the humans, while the Gobolos get the ability to uh, spawn many, many things. Uh, so this game is currently going what? Kickstarter? and Right now. Yeah. Right now, alive on Kickstarter. Kickstarter, Bellum of Mutants and Men. And on the uh, trades and stuff, the, the Gobolos, the one thing is they're throwing bodies at everything. Yeah. And the Sapiens, they've got guns, so they're they're keeping themselves saves. One side's just bodies, trades, doesn't matter. The other side, you're picky, you're not trading, you're taking. Yeah. I mean, I like those cameras. I was playing with the humans a lot. I was with the Sapiens, that's pretty much what I was playing with the con continuously against my cameraman. He's just like, oh, get you, get you. And I'm just like, nah, nah. This, I, I'm keeping this farmer right here, leave him alone. <laughs> So you want to check it out on Kickstarter, it's currently going on right now until when? Yep. Um, uh, August 22nd. No, you're too late. You're too late. Uh, also, not only that, but uh, where would they also learn more about the game other than just the Kickstarter, I guess? Websites, anything else you want to plug? Uh, we've got the website up, bellumgame.com. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And then we're also going to be here at the Cincinnati Arsenal Gaming booth tonight um, from 4 to 10, demoing the game. Yeah, this is coming out way later yeah, than this week. Is. But that's okay. Time traveler. <laughs> if you are a time traveler and you do plan on coming to Gen Con today, come and check it out. <laughs> um, also, um, do you have anything uh, coming out with a so expand, uh, ex ex exclusives or expansion, stuff like that, that's going to be potentially uh, on the Kickstarter? Uh, we have some stuff that we might just be throwing in just to get more enthusiasm for it. One of them might be a promo card for the next game in the books called Kudzu. We've got perhaps some alt art. We're, we're having some discussions because uh, we want to get the hype going because the game is hype. You'll love it. It's uh, competitive. It's scratching a lot of itches. Awesome. So. Thank you guys for taking the time to come out and check out the, uh, the game with me, as well as getting a chance to review it, which was really fun. Um, I have one more question for both of you. I guess this can be a double parter. What do you guys want to do to improve the gaming industry in your own unique way? What's your one little thing you want to do? Uh, guerrilla marketing. I, I, want, I, I want it to be, I want to get a little bit more true to the, uh, the, the core of just getting out there, passion projects. Uh, the guerrilla marketing for our promo here at Gen Con, you give it away after you win a game. And the card itself is called Braggart. He's not very good, but he is a braggart. That's what I want. Yeah, there you go. That's good. That's good. I like You're that. You're up now. Oh, no, I don't have anything for it. You're in trouble then. Tim's going to sit here and look at you then. Oh, God. Um, no, what we're looking for, we want to bring more competitive games into the industry, more competitive card games, more of a uh, competitive scene. We've got Magic. We've got, uh, what, Fantasy, uh, stuff from Fantasy Flight. L5R. L5R. Runner, yeah. Rest in peace. More stuff like that. That's what I want to see. Awesome. Well, thank you guys as always, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hi, guys.
guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con interview. I'm Callie and I'm here with Helena Capel from KTBG and we're here at her booth at Gen Con uh, and she's going to show us some of her games. So how's it going here at Gen Con? Oh my god, it's amazing. It's been three days of non-stop fun. <laughs> awesome. So I'm super excited about the game you're about to show us which is Haunted, Haunt the House, Haunt the House. And uh, just tell us a little bit about the game, like the, the brief synopsis of what it's all about. All right. So in Haunt the House, we are playing um, we are playing ghosts trying to scare out ghost hunters. And we, when they are scared out, we are collecting their gear. So it's a bit of a set collection, a bit of a bluffing game. It's a lot of fun. There are some fresh mechanics that aren't uh, present in other games. and. The art and the game just really shines gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, something really interesting about the bits. It's hard to hold them up. That's a ghost meeple. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and we've got skulls. And both of these components are actually uh, glow in the dark, which is so much fun. People are getting a kick out of that. Wait, so can you play the game in the dark? or can't? Well, that's the thing. You can't really play the game in the dark, but it's so neat to have all the components laid out and say to your friends, you want to see something really cool? Turn off the lights and everything's glowing. It's, it's a really cool. It makes it for a nice like evening, uh, you know, maybe Halloween yeah, game absolutely. activity. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Awesome. So um, what else do you have here at the con? Um, today we are demoing also Problem Picnic Attack of the Ants, with, which is a dice chucking dexterity game. Uh, the neat thing about this game is that it is very layered, so you can on a very simple level play the dice chucking um, and collect the most cards from the picnic blanket to bring back to your colony, and the player with the most points at the end wins. On a more uh, uh, deeper version of the game, you would lay out scorecards that have um, different things that you need to fulfill by the end of the game to score Give more points. Objective. So yes, yeah. objective. Thank you. Um, and so there's a deeper strategy to it. So it's a nice game for kids about four and up. And as they learn how to play the game, they also learn how to get into the strategy piece, so that's really nice. We also have uh, Food Fighters. Which One of my favorites. Yes. Very fun. It is a two-player battle game, head-to-head, -head, where you are playing the meats or the veggies, and you are <laughs> trying veggies. to knock out three of your opponent's foods. Um, also, it's the same sort of thing as Problem Picnic Attack of the Ants, where it's very layered. So at the uh, simplest version of the game, you can just play with attacking, but there are variable player powers that you can add into the game that make the strategy a little bit deeper. Um, and lastly, we are demoing, but do not have uh, it available today at the convention, will be available in April is Rec Raiders and we just finished a successful Kickstarter campaign where we raised sixty thousand dollars and had just over fifteen hundred backers which was really exciting for Wow us. congratulations yeah. thank you um, and this is our uh, it, it's a really really beautiful game just like Haunt the House is but it's a really neat dice drafting and worker placement game and the neat part about it is that when you are placing your divers at the wrecks you are opening up to placing next to yourself or to your opponents and when you place next to yourself you get to gain two resources and if you place next to your opponent you get a resource and your opponent gets a resource so there's a, a, a deep strategy there as well so very beautiful game and we are getting incredible feedback from it awesome thank you for sharing your games I have just one more question for you sure. uh, which is uh, what do you see uh, your games or your company as contributing to building the board game community in a unique way? Oh my goodness, what a great question. Um, and I think that that is a very important question. 
for us, we're trying to build future gamers. And so we're offering to, um, we're offering to children and to families the ability to learn mechanisms that are in deeper strategy games uh, at a very accessible level. And so for us, the kids who play our games are going to grow up to be strategy gamers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Helena, for sharing your game. Uh, <laughs> that's it for this Gen Con interview. And as always, I look forward to you. seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Gen Con 2018 interview, and I am here with Az from Mythic Games. We're gonna hear him talk about Solomon Kane, their latest Kickstarter, and a new Kickstarter game that's coming out shortly. But I wanna know more about Solomon Kane first, so go ahead and give us the spiel about this one. Dude, before I do, I love that I find someone that speaks as fast as I do. You guys better be ready to keep up with this. This is absolutely amazing, right? Nice. I love this, right? Should we go fast? Yeah. Okay, so what's happening with Solomon Kane? So we just had the Kickstarter finish. Yep. We got like just over $1.1 million. I backed it, I wanted it. Uh, thank you so much, man. Like, it was a great campaign. And a really long one, super exciting. Yeah, guys, are you a bit taking pictures in the background? So for us, it was really big. We got the the pledge manager is going to be opening about sort of two to three weeks after Gen Con. So wherever you're, wherever you're watching this, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Oh, dude, it's coming! Like it really, it's going to be amazing. So, so September, we'll have it open for a few months. So if anyone didn't manage to get into it, they, they absolutely can. They still can. So essentially, if anyone doesn't know what what, what Solomon Kane is, we have like a, a copy of the sort of the, the ambassadors kit here. This is just like the the, the demo box essentially. And the idea is Solomon Kane's basically your original witch hunter. He's a Puritan guy. You can watch yeah. the movie movie but really no, you should be we... reading about him yeah, yeah to be honest with you the, yeah. mo the movie's okay we like James Purfoy don't get me wrong he's a great mm -hmm. actor but the movie didn't really capture just how dark the 16th century was you had ghouls ghosts demons werewolves you had bandits and he goes pirates. on so many more adventures Dude, too it's crazy like, in the core box alone we go, we take him to England to Africa to Germany uh, to France like we take him everywhere because that's where he went in Robert E. Howard's original stories yep. um, now the idea is that it's a cooperative game at its core right so one to four players help Solomon Cain on his journeys and they play as these cardinal virtues and everyone oh, will recognize a couple of them yep. like so justice people know has the blindfold and the skills courage has our armor and sword we've got temperance and prudence as well and each one's very asymmetrical very different and the idea is that you're trying to help solomon best you and can you're playing as these specific exactly. things to help solomon individually so yep. cooperatively yep. right that, that's it and the idea is that we do all the games based on the short stories and um, so the short stories have just a linear path yep. but for example to give you a very kind of clean cut one a pirate has a girl knife to throat maybe in the story sort uh, solomon challenges him to a sword fight and kills him but maybe when you guys come to that part of the story you say no actually let's try and negotiate this out let's try and be calm about this let's try and be rational and you split the path and all of a sudden you have a more kind of um, fighting fantasy book splitting narrative and you guys define the story the way you want to it gives it a lot more theme and a lot that's, more story when you add that's that stuff it to man it. hey guys how you doing buddy uh, <laughs> so many interviews at gen gone like this this Con is amazing. This oh, con is huge. Con. If you're not crazy here, here, you gotta come here, man. So yeah, basically you can also play the game competitively as well. And um, so you normally play against an AI darkness. So that's the thing that's fighting against you, constantly messing with your plans. But if you really want to, you can have someone take on that darkness role. They have their own darkness. So the one worth many, if you want. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So you need one v one, one v two, one v three, or one v four. That's all fine. There's also a solo mode and a special solo mode called the Providence mode, where essentially instead of having the four virtues and you controlling multiple of them on your own, what you can do instead is have Providence, who's like an embodiment of all the virtues rolled into one, and you can basically just enjoy the entire experience solo mode key in. I, I like that. that. <laughs> I know a lot of people who really like solo mode games, and if it does it well, it's going to be one of those huge things that just yeah. hits off really Absolutely. hard. And I feel like it would, because I love the theme of Solomon Kane. I love the fact that you're not playing as different characters in the story. You're all Solomon Kane yeah. working together, but it's all this push and pull between all the different things you can go in yeah. and choose from. So yeah. I'm digging it, yeah. and I love all the expansions come out. They look super, super Do you cool. Because I brought some out, because we've got loads of painted minis here, but because it was you, Michael, like I brought out some of the minis, and these are from our Brave New World expansion. So we Basically, it's Solomon Kane in the original stories by Robert E. Hard. He never, oh, so he never cool. went to America. He never went there. It just wasn't something that was written about. So we spoke to the licensor's cabinet and said, "Look, we want to take him to new places." And they were loving what we did. So we've got Native Americans. We've got also characters from the Salem Witch Trials. And what we're basically saying is, what would have happened if Solomon Kane had been around when the uh, like personification of Satan, witches, and civil civilians were being disguised, and kind of witches were hiding among us. And how will players kind of say, okay, I've got to go into this tavern, and I know one of these people are corrupt and evil, but I have to work out which one it is, and I can't wait too long, otherwise they're gonna maybe do something terrible. And the players are gonna be put in these horrible kind of like role-playing situations almost, where they have to evolve the story. It's not always about fighting and swashbuckling. We did, as you, 
as you rightly said, we didn't want to have people playing Solomon and Solomon's sidekick and some other random you know, pirate or fighter. We wanted to focus on Solomon and the players controlling the story. And how they want to go through that campaign, That's which it. is super cool. That's I it. love it. This game is super cool. It's currently on uh, the Kickstarter for late pledge backers if you want. Yeah, so just so it'll be, uh, so it's the start of August now, my dates are all over, so it should be come September. Yeah. The late pledge will be open on a website called gameontabletop.com. The late pledge will be no different from the Kickstarter. Everything that was available on the Kickstarter will be available at the same price, the same pledge on Game on Tabletop. And when's it likely to come out? So we're hoping to deliver it essentially a year from when it finished, so hopefully around Gen Con time next year, all being well, touch wood. I won't lie to you, I'll be honest to everyone at home as well, we set ourselves a really big goal with this. We're looking at something like 2,000 cards in this game. We've actually hired three new game designers to really make this happen because we were blown away by just how much we unlocked and how much uh, people engaged with Solomon Cain. So it's a big project, but we're embracing it. You guys are getting bigger and bigger every single time I see a new campaign. Touch so rude. keep doing it. Touch keep rude, doing man. it. People are loving it. You yeah. know. And we have one more to talk about right here. Yeah. So this what, one. What's, what, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. We going only on? teased this this week. So just leading up to Gen Con, right at the end of July, we put out a trailer. If you haven't seen it on the Mythic Games YouTube channel, uh, for our brand new game, Reichbusters Project Vril. So we have a few minis down here. And what is Reichbusters essentially? It's a weird World War II game that focuses on the Reichbusters. These are like your damn busters. These are your allied heroes. They're over the top. They're almost comical. You know. We've got our commando wielding two it's heavy like machine guns. Yes, yeah, it's got exactly. that kind of like really over the top empowered feel. And these Reich bosses are basically going, it's right at the end of the war, the Nazis are about to lose, there's nothing left for them to do. However, they have Project Vril. This is their special thing. There's this this project that they're basically using to make big mechanized units. Hold on a second. Hey, then can you grab me the mechanized units? You got some mechanized units, units to yeah, show us? Get, Ooh, I like the that. Over here. Um, and the idea is that this is the Germans' last chance, the Nazis' last chance. They're, they're done in the war, but if they're able to get Vril to the front lines, maybe, just maybe, they can turn it around. And the Reichbusters, what you'll be doing is cooperatively in the board game, infiltrating their labs, the castle, you'll be stealing tech, you'll be assassinating, you'll be kidnapping Wolfenstein scientists. Wolfenstein going Dude, on too. Yeah, wow. Got that kind of a cult feel. Inglorious Beep and Wolfenstein put together into a miniature style game. Yeah. I, I dig it, I dig and it. And this is completely our own IP. So although Vril's been seen in other games before this, we are expanding this in really weird ways. So for example, the zombie are a great example, right? These guys are, are dead, dead Nazi humans. zombies? Uh, is that sorry, what I'll is? bring it down here for you there, Kelly. The Nazi so, zombies? Yeah, so these are the Nazi zombies, but what's happened, instead of them being reanimated by like a plague or, or being bitten, they've had armor bolted onto them with Vril right at the back that's essentially forcing them to kind of come back to life. And then you're also going to get, guys, thank you so much, Benoit. Here we go. Why didn't I bring him out before? So the Germans didn't just want to rely on reanimating the dead. They also want to rely on big tech but they also want to rely on maybe uh, like kind of biological warfare as well. So whenever you look at the game, this is going to be quite a simple game. It's going to be about $100, roughly something around that ballpark okay. for, for the Kickstarter. But you're going to see uber soldiers who have been bulked up by serum and real empowered um, goodness. You're going to see mechanized units like this that have real just enabling them to do things that no other armor or panzer type armor at this time could do. And you're also going to see really gribbly stuff that we're going to, okay. this this is tip of the iceberg, man. And if you want to play- That sounds like you guys. Dude, that, that is. Gosh, you know, man, we, we like to reveal stuff over the campaign. Yep. We like to tease. We like to, to, to get the community to interact with us as well. Awesome. Yeah. This all looks amazing. Thank I've loved you. all the game stuff how they brought out. Like I said, the first time I saw all their stuff was from Mythic uh, Pantheon, and I was just like blown away by how much stuff, but not only that, but all the intricacy they put into the IPs of, of you, all man. the different characters and whatnot, things you would not expect to see in the campaign. Um, I, was, I was like, what, what is this? And then I had to be explained during the last con convention I was at, Strategic Con, they was like, oh, this is this, and this is actually part of this, uh, and yeah. Drake, and this, and I'm like, wow, there's, Tons of stuff I didn't even know about and all this folklore, <laughs> and they, they're giving you, so it's almost like a learning experience yeah. too with that. And Solomon Kane is another way, so most people yeah. probably haven't gone through all the ex explanation yeah. of, the, of the books Our and games whatnot. are deep, that's for so. sure. We go, we, go, we go heavy, we give out as much possible content as we can every time. So I got one more question yeah. for you, because I know you're a busy, busy man. It's good though, it's good. What do you want to do to influence the gaming community yourself with, oh, with Mythic Games? What's the interesting Dude, That's an absolutely fantastic question. I love that. So for us, the biggest thing for us at Mythic Games is interaction with people. It's, it's engaging the community and it's having them impact what we do. So for example, with Joan of Arc made an amazing beast sculpted that was done to the original art. The community were like, do you know what? We're not really digging this. We're not really liking the sculpt that much. We changed it. And within 48 hours, we went, do you know what? We hear what you're saying. We want to make something that's more engaging, more dynamic and more interesting for the tabletop. And that's the way we want to be. We don't want to be 
a company that puts a Kickstarter up and just leaves it up there and then it's done. We want to put videos up. We want to do live streams. We, we talk with Kickstarter on a daily basis about how we can make Kickstarter Live more accessible. I see you guys right. on Kickstarter Live all the Dude, time. That's... It's a hard system to do, but you guys do it. Like, we, we would rather dedicate an extra two or three months of the game to really refine it and make something really deep and something that you, when you take it off your shelf, you're going to get a real experience than something that you go, I'm not going to lift that down because I played it once and I kind of know what it's like now. All of our scenarios tend to be something really different to get real variety in our games. And I think that comes from the want to give our community something that they can't get elsewhere. You know, we make board games, but we make insane quality millies and insanely deep quality products. And that's for us is key. No, I, I definitely agree with you guys. This is, I mean, this is my favorite IP of the year. It's the only game I've actually backed in the last nine, ten months. So that says something. No, it really is. It's amazing. <laughs> but and people it was, don't realize that we are still a I'm company, a Kickstarter you know? reviewer. It's what I do. And I saw this and I just, it blew me away. So I'm really excited about it. And yeah, you guys yeah. are super small, but you know. That, you know, we, 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 just incre yeah, we just increased the team to about 15 people, right? Ooh, which, 15. Which, which is, which is you know, Again, in the gaming industry, that's actually really not that small. But for the size of the projects that we do, it is kind of restrictive. So I, I, we generally mean it when every single backer, every single comment, every single suggestion, they sincerely, sincerely matter. And we see you guys talking to backers and whatnot on the campaigns which is so important. Do you know what it's I'm going to show you actually right now? Can I just yeah, go, 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 go. go, go. But yeah, you should definitely check out their games on Kickstarter. They do amazing work. I'm super excited to see this new Reich Busters. Oh, you got right. something else? Here you so go. Okay, I randomly turned up in the booth yesterday, yep. and a lovely lady came up to me with a trolley and a few glasses and this this present, right? We got this brought to the booth with just I no 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 anything, just a name. And it was one of our backers that just said Solomon Cain backer, nothing else, no note, no who it was from, nothing. I think it might be, I think it might be from a guy Frank in the comments who helped us out a lot during the, the Solomon Cain. So Frank, if you watch this, is going to say a personal thank you. But we get so much from our community that we can't do enough to give back to them. And this this kind of little treat just shows that when people come up to us and they, they talk about the game, people not only just like the game, but they care about the company and that you guys are actually putting forth and stuff that matters to the community. You guys are working together, and that's very very important. Dude, that, yeah. that, that's how you build games, you build communities, Absolutely. and that's what's important about gaming. We hope so. Thank you guys so much for giving us the time. Buddy, I'm you. so excited to see you and learn about all your <laughs> new games. I look forward to seeing all this new stuff. And for you guys, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs>